Hi, my name's Dr. Rachel Corman and I'm one of the feline medicine specialists at CAP Specialist Services. This video is to provide you with some information on seizures in cats. Um, we'll talk briefly about the types of seizures, the causes of seizures and how we investigate um, what might be causing seizures in your cat. First of all, seeing a seizure event in your cat can be really distressing. And it's important to remember that these are typically not painful events. Your cat is often not aware that this event is happening at all. The main types of seizures that we see in cats, there's one called a generalized seizure. And so this is where your cat loses consciousness often. They might be paddling as if they're running and you can see a lot of twitching movements and backwards and forwards movements of their legs. They'll often fall onto their side and they may even pass urine and feces as well. It's important to remember just to leave your cats very calmly and quietly and remove any other animals from their environment um, that might cause them harm. Typically these events are over very, very quickly. So they can last anywhere from a couple of seconds um, and worst case scenario, they can last up to a couple of minutes. It's important to try and get an idea of how long these seizure events are lasting for as that gives us some very important information in the future. So a generalized seizure is one type of seizure that we see. Another type of seizure that can be more common in cats than in dogs, for example, is what we call a partial seizure or a focal seizure. And this is where typically just a very small part of the front part of their brain is affected. And they can often be very, very subtle signs, um, such as chomping of their jaw or twitching of their facial um, muscles or whiskers. Um, and they can be very difficult sometimes to, to detect we also see another type of seizure, particularly in older cats, called an audiogenic reflex seizure. And there's another video about this on our website, so please do take a look at that for more information. But typically, these are seizure events that are often partial seizures, but they're triggered by very specific noises. Um, for example, the sound of jangling keys or crunching of alfoil, for example. So the type of seizure that we see doesn't necessarily give us any indication as to the type of disease that's happening. If we talk a little bit about the types of diseases that cause seizures in cats, we can see infectious diseases. So common causes in this category would be things such as feline infectious peritonitis syndrome, which is caused by a coronavirus similar to COVID. In cats, we can see infections with an organism called toxoplasma, which is a type of parasite. And we can also see fungal infections. And the most common one in this part of the world in Australia would be a fungal infection called cryptococcus, which particularly likes to infect the nose and the brain of cats. Other causes in older cats, we can see brain cancers such as lymphoma would be a, a common one and meningiomas and gliomas. And we can also see other diseases such as high blood pressure causing seizure events in older cats as well. These diseases are typically uncommon in younger cats. However, infection with coronavirus and subsequent FIP development would be more common in the younger cat population. Other causes of seizures would be epilepsy. And epilepsy is essentially what we call a diagnosis of exclusion. This is where we look for all other causes of seizure events in cats. We don't find anything obvious and so by exclusion, the cat is diagnosed as having epilepsy. And often we don't know what the underlying cause or trigger um, of that epilepsy is. Now, typically epilepsy is a disease that we see in younger cats. With our investigations that we perform to try and identify the underlying cause of seizures in cats, we tend to follow a diagnostic pathway. This starts with a thorough physical examination of your cat. We're looking for other, other neurological signs that may point to disease affecting other parts of the brain that are separate to that area of the brain that results in seizure activity. 
We also look for signs of disease in other parts of the body. So we'll look at their eyes, we'll have a thorough look at their chest and their abdomen. As for example, diseases such as feline infectious peritonitis may cause signs of infection in other parts of the body. For example, lesions in the back of their eyes or enlarged lymph nodes. Other things that we may then progress to look at might be blood testing. And this can be to look at both their red cell and white cell counts and also their general organ function as diseases such as lymphoma or FIP or toxoplasmosis may result in systemic signs of illness elsewhere in the body. Patients with epilepsy though, for example, will have normal results in all of these tests. If we're concerned about potential changes in the chest or abdomen of your cat, then we may suggest additional imaging such as a chest x-rays or an abdominal ultrasound. Further testing that is more focused on the neurological system of your cat may then follow. This could include either a CT scan or potentially an MRI scan, what we call advanced imaging of the brain and spinal cord. Both of these diagnostic tools need anesthesia, not because they're painful, but purely just because we need your cat to be very still. And we'll talk to you about the potential risks um, of anesthesia in your cat as well at the time of your appointment. Another tool that we tend to use to investigate seizure activity in cats is what we call a CSF tap or a cerebrospinal fluid sample collection. We have a separate video on this available on the website, but essentially it's where we obtain a small sample of spinal fluid that gives us important information as to the cell characteristics, protein content, and we can also do specific testing for different infectious agents within the spinal fluid as well. Once we've identified any abnormal changes, typically this will help us to either determine if your cat has an infectious or inflammatory cause of their seizures, or potentially if they have epilepsy. And after this, we'll discuss the various treatment options that are available to you. It's really important to remember when your cat is seizuring that this is not a painful event for them. They're not aware of what's happening. If you have the ability to grab your smartphone and very quickly film their seizure event, this can provide some very useful information to your vets regarding the type of seizure event that's happening. Remember that seizuring in cats is a, a very important thing to identify and you should seek veterinary attention if you notice that your cat is having a seizure event. Please don't hesitate to visit our website for any further information on seizures.